Hello, I'm Professor Bill Kling from the University of Illinois Chicago School of Public Health. I'm a professor in the Health Policy and Administration Division, and you're registered for Health Policy and Administration Course 445, Introduction to Organizational Leadership. I thought I would take this opportunity on this video to introduce the course, go through the course outline, talk a little bit about the concept of the course, a little bit about the deliverables for the course, and uh, give you some, some guidance in terms of how we're going to move forward. Um, there will be this videotape. I will do a couple of other videotapes for your perusal. Um, there will be other videotapes uh, on the course website and on the Blackboard site, I should say, um, of interviews um, with me and other folks um, that are resources for this course. Um, in addition, I will post the um, podcast that I've used in previous uh, semesters. You will note on the podcast that I refer to a, a TA by the name of uh, Ada, who unfortunately is no longer my TA. So um, if you hear the name Ada, don't get confused. Um, but I thought that the podcasts were a good enough resource, um, another, another way for you to get the content in this course. So I'm um, very excited to be here. This is a course I've um, taught several times, both in person and online. Uh, the online version, I think, works very well in that students uh, are broken into groups for group exercises. Um, there's a really lively discussion about uh, organizational leadership, organizational development, organizational behavior, organizational design, and um, all within the context of the policy framework and the other um, courses that you have had uh, so far. So very pleased to be here. Um, the concept of this course kind of um, came to me after reviewing the kind of overall goals of public health in general, kind of the hierarchical approach. And you'll note that throughout the semester that the concept of hierarchy plays a key role. Um, key role in terms of um, the way the course is designed and also a key role when we start talking about organizations themselves and organizational design. Um, I'm very pleased uh, this semester that we will be joined by um, Professor Emily Steele, who uh, Dr. Steele will, is an expert and a, a researcher on organizational behavior, and she will add some additional kind of research and evidence base uh, in terms of organizational um, behavior and uh, organizational leadership um, that I think will be a real benefit to you. Um, so again, her information will fit within this hierarchical um, analysis as well. So the way that I like to think about um, organizational leadership, leadership in general, is really from a hierarchical perspective. And you can draw the um, hierarchical model anyway. I tend to do this shape here, which is um, a delta. Uh, and I like that symbol um, because it, it represents change. And I think we always have to bear in mind when we're talking about organizational design and organizational leadership and organizational behavior that the term change is a key uh, to success. Um, change is difficult in organizations. I know some of you have been through change and uh, it is a very kind of um, tricky situation in organizations when there's change. So I tend to like to use this shape um, to define um, a hierarchy. It could go this way. It could go this way. Okay? These are all hierarchical figures. I know that some people like to think of organizational design like this, sorry about that bad circle, um, but I tend to believe, and you can disagree, it's okay, that um, it's very difficult to have an organizational design that is too egalitarian. Uh, truth be told, organizations in our culture, our society, our, our business environment, organizations are hierarchical and we'll have a, a lot of opportunity to talk about that in the future. And what I'd like to do is start with the initial hierarchy of how this course is designed. 
So when I talk about organizational leadership, what I'm talking about is a hierarchy. And the first unit of instruction, the first unit of discussion, the first um, facilitated conversation we will have is really at the bottom of this hierarchy, if you will. And this is about individual, individual leadership. And again, you'll have to forgive my handwriting for those of you that have had me for classes in the past. You know that my handwriting is atrocious, and um, I apologize for that. Uh, it's not one of my leadership characteristics, which we'll be talking about in the next tape. Um, in fact, it's a detriment that I have bad handwriting, but that's just how it goes. So at the, at the very um, core of organizational leadership is individual leadership. And we're going to be spending some time in the first unit of the course exploring the concept of individual leadership. We're going to explore your concept of leadership, your context of leadership. It's um, contextual. That's a word that we like to use to describe uh, how organizations work. Contextual. So in terms of your own leadership, uh, we're going to explore that through looking at your resumes and having your peers look at your resume and really develop your resume so that at least out of this course you will have one deliverable which will be a revised resume. So I tend to look at instruction as a values based and values driven and I want you to get a value and many values out of this course. So in addition to the competencies and uh, learning objectives that are, that are typical for courses, I also like to have uh, deliverables that are tangible, that are real. And in this case, in terms of individual leadership, the context will be your own leadership. And it will be in the form, first of all, in terms of your resume, which defines you. And as we'll see as we go through the resume building process, uh, that resumes are um, uh, two-dimensional pieces of paper in black and white that you're trying to tell a three-dimensional story about yourself, a living, breathing document. It's a very difficult thing to do well, and it's a very uh, uh, subjective document so that the advice that I give you on how you're resume should look, may differ from your peers, may differ from student affairs and student development and career services. Um, you know, you're going to get different opinions and you have to kind of really work that through yourself. So in terms of our organizational leadership hierarchy, we started individual leadership and the first context is yourself and uh, we're going to define that through your resume. The second context is what we call um, reflective, reflective leadership. And that will be the second part of the unit on individual leadership is reflective leadership. And um, you, we will have a guest speaker um, by the name of Elizabeth Glasgow. Uh, she is an expert in this concept. She's very well uh, read and, and uh, has lots of experience in what uh, she'll talk about in terms of the parallel process that I think is an important concept within her model of reflective leadership that she will be sharing with you um, that she's developed through some, some researchers and some experts in the area. So um, when we're thinking about individual leadership, we're first kind of reflecting on our own leadership. We're reflecting on how leaders look in our society, and we're going to talk about that in the next video, um, what I call a, uh, a leadership assessment. And um, we'll be talking about that in the next tape, so stay tuned for that. Um, so once we have a thorough and full discussion about individual leadership, we move up the organizational hierarchy to relationships. 
relationships. And in this case, what we're talking about is really managing relationships. What does it look like? How does it feel to really engage with others? What do we know about that relationship management? Um, how, as leaders, do we use those relationships, utilize those relationships uh, to, to further the goals of our organization, to further the goals of our uh, mission and vision. So relationships are, are critical and um, we'll be spending some time talking about relationships and how they fit within the organizational context. And uh, we'll have a, a full discussion on that. And we'll also have some uh, uh, resources uh, for you to think about uh, how um, relationships, what they mean to you, and how you define relationships, and how we you know, approach relationships systemically through a framework as opposed to just ad hoc. So that's the second unit. So you've got kind of one, you know, one plus one. And then what we move into is um, the heart and soul of public health, the heart and soul of uh, this course, uh, the heart and soul of what um, we do uh, in this um, profession, in this, in, in, this, um, uh, in this venue. And we move into communities. Communities. So, what do organizations look like in the community? And um, this unit of instruction will be a couple of um, different um, uh, exercises, um, one of which we will have a, a hypothetical community-based organization, or CBO, that you will be working with uh, as a, um, a role-playing, as, as staff members or board members of this community-based organization, um, and uh, called uh, Community Connections. Con. And so we'll have an exercise, we'll have some video resources of individuals that work in the community. Um, it's so critical to the work that we do in public health and to the work that you're doing uh, in terms of your practicum sites and in terms of your career development to understand how community works, to understand uh, cultural competency within the communities that we serve. We're, we're fortunate to be uh, in Chicago, University of Illinois, you know, in Chicago, at Chicago is a, a very, um, you know, it, it's a blessing. We have a, a real a learning uh, laboratory right outside the window of this classroom. Uh, we know that there's communities and neighborhoods in Chicago that, that have um, significant public health challenges, significant challenges to have um, individuals succeed and uh, to develop relationships and to ultimately you know develop leadership in the organizational context so community is really the heart and soul and it's not by accident that it sits in the middle of the hierarchy so communities are supported by individuals and relationships and then support the final two um, elements of the organizational hierarchy the way that I see it, one being the nation state, okay, the nation state. Um, and again, we'll be spending some time on that and what that means. Um, again, what we'll be doing in the context of nation state is bringing it back around to some of the um, context of other coursework you've had in health policy administration, what it means to be in public health as public entities. I mean, public health's first name is public. So what does that mean in terms of the nation state? We'll be looking both in the community um, unit and the nation state unit, we'll be looking at um, strategic planning and strategic directions. So we'll be looking at things like 
the vision of organizations, the mission, the values that drive organizations, the goals and the objectives. And so I'll be delivering another, another videotape on strategic planning and strategic directions to give you some guidance and I believe that this video um, process works and I think it's helpful for you to get the content. So I'll be coming back to that in coming weeks um, in terms of strategic planning and strategic directions. And then finally, so critical to you as younger people than me and so critical to, um, to the way that we do business now, to the way that we manage our communities to the way that we get things accomplished is the world view. The world view. And so it's not by accident that communities support relationship communities support the nation state and worldview and communities are supported by individuals and relationships. And when we get to the worldview, we'll be looking at organizational context in terms of um, in terms of organizations like the United Nations and other countries, um, you know, structures and things like that. So again, it kind of loops back around to some of the themes you've had in the other policy courses. Um, but I like to think of our organizational leadership, organizational development, organizational design, and organizational behavior in the context of this hierarchy. Individual, relationship, community, nation state, and worldview. And of course, within here, you'll be hearing from Professor Steele on some of her concepts that kind of bring some of these things together as well. So that's the framework for the course. Now, just briefly, I want to just um, give you some, and again, all of this will be on the Blackboard site, but since I'm in front of you today, I'll just give you a couple of, um, a couple of key points of the course. One is that we'll be doing a couple of exercises in here, group exercises that will have deliverables in the community um, uh, unit. We will have um, uh, we'll have a strategic planning document that you and your group will have to share. In the individual section, as I mentioned, you'll have uh, resumes. Um, about halfway through the course, um, we will have a, a midterm examination, and uh, it uh, it really is something that's really looking for you to reflect um, and I think that it's a it's not a difficult midterm it's it's a higher level thinking I like to think of this course as a higher level thinking course as you know those of you who know me and even if you don't you will learn quickly that I am not a type of uh, professor or or teacher that looks at you know regurgitating information back to me that's not why I'm in this business I'm here to make you think, to be provocative, to help you understand how these things work together and, and how they further um, our world. And I'd like to say, you know, that, that um, folks go into the discipline of public health um, because they want to make change, as I talked about at the beginning, and they want to um, have an impact. And if you're in the discipline of public health, I automatically know uh, when we get to leadership assessment in the next tape that, that you're, um, you're a good person. You're good people. If you've chosen public health as your professional uh, avenue, as your professional trend, then you know, you're a good person. Um, so there will be a midterm to kind of test that higher level thinking to show me how good you are as a person. And then uh, there will be a final project due at the end, which will be a, a PowerPoint or Prezi or any way that you uh, like to present. Um, usually they're PowerPoints. I've had a couple of Prezi's, um, but uh, these are uh, PowerPoints on, um, on either an individual leadership, I'm, I'm sorry, an individual leader, an organizational model or a leadership theory. So the PowerPoint is up to you in terms of what you choose to do it on either individual leader and an example of an organization that um, demonstrates organizational design or a leadership theory. Um, most students choose individual leadership. 
uh, individual leaders to do their project on, and that's fine. The concept, and again, we'll have much, much more time to discuss this, but the concept is really to look at, as we you know, fill out these units, use that as your framework for your PowerPoint. I lay it all out for you uh, in terms of how I'm looking for you to analyze um, your given topic or your given person. So with that, that's kind of an overview of the course. Um, and uh, I will be, again, doing additional videotapes. Um, we will have also some synchronous sessions, probably one or two, uh, maybe three synchronous sessions where we'll get on an Adobe Connect uh, site um, and uh, we'll be able to, you know, confer uh, synchronously. I'll give you an, uh, that opportunity once or twice or three times a semester just to kind of get to know each other if you have any questions. Just, uh, it's nice to get together synchronously um, in this asynchronous context called um, distance education, online learning. So I'd like to provide that opportunity uh, a couple of times for us to discuss. And in the meantime, uh, there will be plenty of information on the Blackboard site. Um, there will be resources. There will be links to um, videos and podcasts. In addition, there will be um, books that I will ask you to, to get, um, which will be listed on the Blackboard site. As well. So with that, um, that's the end of the introduction, uh, and I look forward to working with you. You can always email me or call me. The, that information will be on the Blackboard site as well. So thank you. I look forward to talking to you soon. Thank you.